Attention, you lucky children. Today you have two pieces of English work to do. Well, not really, because this is not a compulsory piece of work. It is an optional piece of work. You need to make sure you've got your hot task finished today. That's the important compulsory piece of work. But if you finish that and you fancy doing something else, you can have a go at publishing your work. It's quite a fun one. It's taking your hot task and adding things like pictures, changing the fonts, that type of thing to make it more exciting. But you don't have to do it. Full disclaimer, I'd made this before it was decided to have a World Book Day, so I had an extra lesson. I didn't want to throw it in the bin, so I'm giving it you here as an extra work to do on the Friday if you want to. So just finally, this is optional. You do not have to do this. It is only if you want to do this, but you do have to do your hot task today. Good morning, Year 4, and welcome to our English lesson today. Today we are learning to publish a historical information text. Now, if you haven't finished your hot task from the last couple of days, I suggest you go and carry on with that now rather than doing today's lesson. If you haven't quite done all of it, but you've done maybe three or four of the sections, then that's probably enough. But if you want to carry on with your hot task, please do. And if you haven't done quite done enough yet, use today's lesson to finish off your hot task. So you should have something that looks a bit like this. It's your information text that you've written. It's paragraphs broken up in lots of facts with all the different skills in them. But it's not very exciting looking, is it? It's a bit dull and boring just having pages and pages of paragraphs like this. We want to make it more interesting because remember the audience is going to be children your age. So therefore it's got to look more exciting. So what I'd like is work that looks something like this. OK, so this is an information text, one of the ones that was sent to you on my own that you had a look through and you took your facts from. You can see here it's a much more exciting looking document. I'd be much more interested to pick up this book and read it than the previous slide. So let's have a look at what it is that makes this one so good. Let's look at some of the features that we need to include when we publish our work today. First of all, there's a title. It says looking good and keeping clean. So this is all about how they look fantastic, kept themselves clean. It's a really interesting title, but it tells the audience what this section is going to be about. If you look at it, though, it's not just the same font as all the rest of it. They made it lots of exciting different colors. They've slanted it. They've changed the size of certain things. They've had something in, well, it's all in capitals, but they made it look really exciting as a title. It draws you in as the audience. So today, when we think about the titles for our sections, we'll think about how we can make them more exciting. The next one are the subheadings there. So looking good, this section, this uh, the, the subheading of this bit is hair and beauty. So the little bit of text underneath it all is all about hair and beauty. Remember, we did this in previous lessons, whereby you'd have the title to say what the main things going to be about. And the subheading tells you the specific piece of information you might be looking for. So if I'm looking at this page and I'm really excited to learn about hair and beauty, I don't have to read the entire thing. I can go straight to that subheading. So today, when you're doing your work, think as well as thinking about the titles, think about could my work be broken up into different subheadings? Could each section have a different subheading? Or could the sections that I've done be split up into different bits with different subheadings on? The next one we got on here, really excitingly, are images. Obviously, an image really helps bring an information text to life, especially for children. There's nothing worse than reading information text, which is just pages and pages of writing. You need the images. Not only the images hook the reader in, but they also give you loads of information from one picture that you can get from lots and lots of words. So instantly looking at this picture here, I get a really good understanding of what hairstyles would look like in the Roman times. I don't have to have pages and pages of writing about what they're going to be looking like. And even when it is written, it's much more description in a picture. So therefore, the images are really important. So we need to make sure we're putting some pictures into our work today. The course, there needs to be a caption. Now, we have looked at these in the past. But remember, if you're putting a picture in, then you need to include a caption so that therefore your reader knows what the image is. There was no, for example, just putting this woman in with no caption attached to it because your reader may think it's a Roman person with a cool hairstyle. They might think it's a broom that's upside down. Who knows? But you need the caption there on the picture to tell the reader, here's a lovely picture. This is going to show you lots of things, but this is what it is about. Now, normally it might just be a simple heading. Here they've added a bit more information to it. But how you do the captions is up to you. But it's really important that you don't just put an image in there. You add a caption with it. 
And then finally, the last thing on here, are these fax boxes. Now, these always look absolutely fantastic when they're included on these information texts. Now, if you look, there's not really a lot of information in those fact boxes. They don't have to be in boxes like that. They could be out with the rest of it in paragraphs. But by just putting them in those little boxes, it instantly makes it more exciting. So today, when you're thinking about your writing, could some of them be included in little boxes? Some of those facts you've done, could you take them away from the main paragraph and put them in a little fact box, change the color of that fact box? Here you can see this one that's pointed to has got lots of kind of red around the outside. It's got a really exciting subheading that goes with it. So these are all the features I want you to try and think about today when you're publishing your text. You need to make sure you've got a title or titles in there. You need to make sure you've got subheadings for your different section. You need to make sure that you've got images in there. These could either be ones that you've found off the internet or ones you've drawn yourself. You need to make sure you've got captions in there and you need to make sure you try and put some kind of interesting fact boxes in there, split your facts up so not just in one big boring paragraph, they're split up and look more exciting. So this is the type of thing I'm looking for. And the reason we're doing this is not just because, oh, you know, we've written it, let's rewrite it all over again. What I would like to do with your finished piece of work is to put it into a class book. And then this class book will be used by the year fours next year. So all those year threes who are currently squatting down there in the other end of the building, when they come up and they become big, ugly, hairy year fours like you lot, then they can have a look at what you did and go, oh, look, at this lovely work. That's how quality of my work needs to be. So I'd like you to produce something really beautiful to show off to them for next year. Now, here are a couple of examples I just found online of where children have had a go at doing the kind of information texts um, in an exciting way on paper. So you can see they split them into different paragraphs with subheadings, there's pictures in there. Some of them have got pictures behind the writing. Be careful. I'd be great to see that. But if you do the pictures too dark underneath, you can't read the reading. But you can see how exciting these look compared to just writing it out boringly. So if you have done your work on the computer and you've got it all typed up, well, then what you can do is you can be thinking about copying pictures from the Internet or drawing your own, photographing them and dropping them in. You can then be uh, splitting your text up into different text boxes if you fancy doing that. Change the font, change the color. You can make it really exciting on the computer. If you're one of the people who has written theirs by hand, so you have a choice. You can either rewrite everything really excitingly and beautiful like is shown here, or you can take your original text and with some support from your parents, you could cut the sentences up a bit. You could re-stick them down into different places around different pictures. Again, you could find pictures and print them off, or you could draw your own pictures to go with them. So today, remembering it's all about taking the previous hot task that you've already done and making it look beautiful so that we can put it in a class book, something you'd be really proud of. There's no new writing as such today. It's taking what you've previously done and making it look beautiful so that you can produce something like this. If you're doing it online, then submit it back to us. If you're doing it on paper, then you don't need to photograph it and send it in. If you can bring it in and give it to either myself or Miss Barrett when you come in next, when we're all in school, hopefully. And then we've got everything. We can take your copy, we can print the ones off online and we create a lovely class book. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing you get on with this today. Make sure your work looks absolutely beautiful and I'm really excited to see how you get on with this today.